In this video, I will apply Kirchhoff's loop rule on, on an RC circuit where I charge the capacitor. Now, what I have here is um, EMF represents the potential difference across the battery and R is the resistor, C is the capacitance um, of the capacitor. I have um, I have drawn with uh, red arrows the direction of the electric fields around the circuit and I have also indicated some positions one two three four five six just so I can I can show what the loop is I will start from point one and I will move clockwise and I will come back to point one that that is the loop I'm gonna follow and what I have done here, I have from 1 to 2, I have V2 minus V1 plus V3 minus V2 and so on. Now the first step here is to get rid of any potential difference that is across an ideal wire where I, I assume that the potential difference is exactly zero. From 1 to 2, I am only moving on an ideal wire, so that, so that is zero. From 3 to 4, it's a zero from five to six, it's a zero and everything else um, is not zero. Now from two to three, since the electric field points to the right and I'm moving in the same direction, I know that this is going to be a negative number. From four to five, I am moving in the same direction as the electric field, so that will also be a negative number. And then from 6 to 1, I move against the electric field, so that will be a plus. Now, since from 2 to 3, it's a, it's an ohmic resistor, I have simply I times R. Um, I'm going to come back to this at the end. From 6 to 1, I'm moving across the resistor, so this is an EMF, and the whole thing is going to be a 0. Now this is this is the potential difference across the capacitor. Now what I know for a capacitor that the capacitance is defined as Q over delta V, the absolute value of delta V where delta V is the potential difference across the capacitor. Now what I'm interested though in finding is the absolute value of the potential difference across the capacitor. So if I rearrange this I get Q over C. So I'm using here Q over C and I'm, I'm going to write again the equation that I get minus IR minus Q over C plus EMF is equal to zero. Now, so he, here is the thing. Um, this is actually a differential equation. And the reason for this is that um, if you recall, when I first defined the current, the conventional current is is defined as delta Q over delta T and if we if we use very small differences this will become dQ over dT and then if i use dQ over dT here well actually i have to i have to think about the sign whether i need uh, whether i will be plus or minus dQ over dT but in any case the important thing is that when you use dQ over dt here, this will um, this will become a differential equation. And um, in introductory physics classes, uh, especially in the algebra-based physics class, we don't talk about that at all. Um, in the calculus-based introductory physics class, we talk about this a little bit. Um, this is more of a topic for an upper level um, uh, physics class. Now, what I want you to get from here is that to um, once you apply Kirchhoff's loop rule in this circuit, you can get an, a mathematical equation. If you have the tools, you can solve it. But the the expression that we get, okay, I'm I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna skip um, solving the differential equation, and I'm gonna go to the result. What we get from here is that the current that flows in this circuit will be e, e, I naught minus T over RC. This is what um, the current will look like. And I'm going to do a graph really quick to show you, for, for you to have a graphical representation of this. The 
the current will decrease exponentially and this value will be the i naught this is i as a function of time okay uh, this is not a great graph but it it's not a linear certainly it's not a linear graph um, it is an exponential decrease of the current and um, and this shows the, this expression shows that as soon as you make the connection and you start charging the capacitor you're gonna have a large current at the beginning and as time goes by the current will decrease now in theory um, in theory, the current will never be exactly zero, but of course, if you wait long enough, um, your your instrument will not be able to measure any current and practically the current will be zero. Now, this is, um, this is the current that flows in the circuit and I naught is the maximum value, the, the value of the current at t equals zero. So this is the current at t equals zero. Now, since I'm charging the capacitor, of course, I need um, uh, I need to also know how much charge I have the, on the capacitor. And the charge on the capacitor as a function of time is Q naught, one minus to the E to the minus T over RC. Now the graph for this is going to look a little bit different. Remember, this is the case where I'm charging the capacitor. And at the beginning, the charge on the capacitor is zero. So what, what this function shows me is that the charge on the capacitor increases exponentially and this is here the value of Q naught. Okay, if you wait long enough, effectively the charge on the capacitor will be Q naught. Now, how do I know that this is what the graph looks like? If you plug in T equals zero, you have E to the zero, which gives you one, one minus one gives you zero. That's how I know that it starts here. If you plug in a very large number for time here, um, the exponential of a negative large number is going to be a very small number overall and 1 minus a very small number is practically 1 minus 0. That's how I know that the charge Q becomes essentially Q naught if you wait long enough. Now in, in this video I, I emphasized Kirchhoff's loop rule. Um, this is where you have to think about the, the physics of the potential differences and um, then I skipped the mathematical process of solving the differential equation um, and here I'm presenting the two um, the, the charge on the capacitor as a function of time and the current as a function of time. If you have a problem where the problem is asking you to find for the potential difference across the capacitor as a function of time, just take this and divide it with C and that will give you the potential difference across the capacitor.